Hello everyone, today I want to talk about a relatively new method of converting mesh files and Fusion 360 to solid bodies, the prismatic converter. If it works well, you're left with something like this, which pretty much looks like the stock uh, step file or the stock you know, uh, CAD body, but uh, your mileage will definitely vary, as you can see from these, two, these results and from this, which is also part of the uh, prismatic converter. Yeah, it really depends on the file you're importing and on your settings, but if it works well, you're left with pretty much like something that's pretty much like the original CAD body. And that includes the curves, as you can see. This is an actual circle, actual hole, uh, circular shaped hole that is technically, it's still a hole in here as well, technically, but this is a polygon. So uh, if you don't know, if you use the normal old method of converting uh, mesh files in Fusion 360, this is the sort of file you get. Just a bunch of triangles, which is how STL files are saved. And uh, you can't have any curves in those, so the circles are actually converted when you export as an STL. These are converted to uh, many-sided polygons, depending on your settings. The actual side count will differ on your settings and the size of the hole. And uh, you can do some cleaning, so you can select a face and hit delete, etc. And this is the sort of file you get in the end. This is definitely workable if you want to edit your STL file in Fusion 360, but uh, it's not great to work with. It, it's, it's not easy, the easiest thing to work with, and if you, for example, want to make this world larger, smaller, etc., you essentially have to get rid of it completely and then create the hole again in the a diameter you want. And yeah, it's a pain to work with, is, is what I'm getting at. So when this works well, this is really nice, but Again, your mileage will definitely vary, as you can see from these results. And uh, even these two top ones, they're not uh, usable. Uh, you can see that in all four of these, uh, there are a lot of faces missing. And uh, there's a difference between the top row and the middle row. I'll get to that. But even the top row, you can see there are faces missing in the inside of this, for example. This almost looks okay, but if you zoom in, you can see some yellow sides this is the other side of the face if you don't know um, imagine like you're wrapping something in vinyl wrap and then um, this is the adhesive side this is not the side you're supposed to see it's supposed to be filled inside which fusion 360 or any other cat package doesn't render the solid but it should have all the faces and yeah it doesn't so you can see the opposite side and this is not uh, something you can use uh, you could try messing with some of the repair options but uh, in general, if you have facing faces missing, uh, it will create headaches down the line, so it's not worth using. So for these two files and a lot of other files that you encounter, the old method of conversion is still better. But uh, yeah, the end result is something like this after the cleaning or before the cleaning, which again is just uh, getting rid of some of the triangles. And on, in this case, you can't even get rid of some of the triangles. Fusion 360 at least can't process it, so. Uh, and yeah, as I said, it's a pain to work with these, but it's pretty much impossible to work with these. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, you have to in import your uh, mesh file. So go to insert, select insert mesh, and then select your STL file. And let's say you imported this. Next, you'll go to the mesh workspace. And depending on the, the uh, method you want to use, you either will go into convert mesh or select generate face groups. So if you want to use the old converter, you can just go to uh, convert mesh here, select your mesh file and select the first method here. And this is the old method of converting and this is the result you will get. Uh, in this case, it took about two minutes to process this file. Uh, some files take longer than the others and it will also depend on your system. My system is a fairly high-end computer, 8 threads, 16 cores, 32 gigs of RAM and I don't think it matters, but a 1080 Ti GPU. Uh, depending on your system, this will probably take longer, but in my case, it took two minutes. You'll see the new prismatic converter in here as well, but if you just select it and hit OK, nothing will happen. It won't process. First of all, you have to go to generate face groups, select your mesh file, and here you have two options, accurate and fast. And uh, there are some configurables after under each option as well. And it takes a while to process that as well. This middle row is fast and the top row is accurate. So I'll, I have three examples of SCL files that I've imported in this, in this uh, Fusion 360 file. I've also worked with other 
imported STL files as well. And I can say that the fast face group generator never works well. And I tried tuning some of the variables under the fast generator as well. It never worked well. You always have some problems. Like a lot in case, a lot of cases, you just have a bunch of faces missing, or sometimes you even get this something like this a bulbous monstrosity that I don't know how it happened. But either way, it is useless. And uh, as I said, I tried tuning it; doesn't work. So don't bother with that. You can use the accurate converter, and I actually didn't really try messing with the boundary tolerance under this. So I don't know. Maybe you can get it a bit better, but it takes a while to process that anyway. So I didn't want to bother. And uh, using the accurate converter, uh, when you do that, the mesh file will look exactly the same. So this and this look exactly the same. But uh, when you select the correct mesh and then go to convert mesh again, and you know select the prismatic converter and hit OK, it will actually convert this time. Generating the face groups, especially with the accurate generator, and then the conversion as well, takes a decent amount of time to process. Like this file. Uh, took 15 minutes to process on my computer versus you know the others were one or two minutes but for example this was pre pretty much instantaneous to convert so again depends on the file you're working with and uh, yeah this is the result you get you'll also see the option to com to convert using the organic method if you have an add-on on your fusion 360 otherwise i think they'll be locked but for our purposes, for working on 3D printable models, for you know, mechanical parts, this is useless. The organic converter is for working with organic shapes, like, I don't know, sculptures and uh, things like that, things that are related to art, not uh, mechanical parts. It's not useful for that, so don't bother with that, even if you have the option. But the other two, they both have their uses, and in a lot of cases, you still use the old method because the new method will result in missing faces, but when it works well, it works really well and even if it doesn't for example in this case uh, you might want to import both of these files for example and then uh, do your cleaning etc uh, left be left with this and then chop off this part uh, get rid of it chop this uh, get rid of the outer part in this case and you know merge them together stitch them together and you actually have the curves because in this case i don't think there are faces missing in the uh, where the extruder gears will sit in this model so uh, even in this case, it has some uses. So I don't know. I thought this is an interesting thing to show with Fusion 360. Uh, if you just want to import mesh files and if you don't want to bother with all this headache, just go with the old uh, faceted converter. But uh, yeah, you can get better results. So it's worth trying if you want to uh, see what options you have with Fusion 360. But that's it for this video. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please leave a like down below. And thanks for watching.